Hello everyone, welcome back to the Football Stadium Show YouTube channel and welcome to a brand new Around the Ground. Today I'm here at Parkside, home to Averley Football Club, as they are going to be taking on Braintree Town FC in an Essex derby. Along with that, I'll be taking a look around the stadium, looking at their history and interviewing manager Danny Scopes. Let's get inside. Averley FC was formed back in 1927, played in local leagues until the break in football due to the Second World War. Upon football returning, they played in the Essex Junior Cup and won it twice in 1948 and 1949. After years of moving up and down the footballing pyramid, over the past two years, Averley have faced a flurry of success. Under the management of Danny Scopes, in the 2021-22 season, the Millers won the Ishbian Division 1 North and were promoted to the Ishbian League Premier Division. Then, last season, the club were victorious in the League Cup, beating Potters Bar Town 3-0. Also, for the second time in a row, the club were promoted again, winning the playoff finals to achieve promotion to the National League South for the first time in the club's history. Averley played their home games at Millfield Stadium, which stood on this site from 1952 up to 2017. The name of the ground was how the club got their nickname, the Millers. In 2018, though, the club sold the land to developers who built houses here and used the money to buy the site, which I've stood on now which at the time was a gravel pit, but the club have transformed it into a modern 3,500 capacity ground called Parkside Stadium. It's got four stands and an artificial pitch. The main stand features a nice spacious bar, and there's also an outside one too, where you could pre-order drinks at half time. Feeling hungry, we had to get ourselves some food. Okay, so as always, we've got some food. We've gone with some um, cheesy chips here. The cheese is completely melted, which is a massive plus. Uh, also a cheese burger, um, which looks quite nice. Cheese partly melted on there as well. And now my dad's got the jumbo hot dog. Mm. Yeah. All fueled up, it was time to watch the match. Today they take on rivals Braintree Town in an Essex derby. So far this season, Averley have got off to a flying start, sitting in fourth place, winning six out of nine games. As for Braintree Town though, they're down in 15th, winning just two games out of nine. But as usual, on derby day, form goes out of the window and anything can happen. Let's go. Both teams made their way out onto the pitch in front of just under 500 people. <laughs> Braintree started the game well on top, with four corners in just three minutes. And the early pressure led to a goal, Matt Carson firing home from the edge of the area on the five minute mark. Averley immediately responded with a fantastic long ball finding Kay, who brilliantly got past Carson. However, his cross into the box was cut out. Braintree's number 11, Tom Blackwell, then made a darting run down the left. However, his cross was well out of play. He'll probably blame that one on the wind. Midway through the first half, Braintree's Joe Grimwood went down with a face injury turned out to be his nose which was bleeding and so they had to patch him up which took about five minutes. Braintree were taking zero risks with their clearances. That was all for the first 45, the visitors leading 1-0. As the second half started, Joe Grimwood, who had earlier been hit in the nose, was being checked by the linesman for any blood in his shirt. However, he ran straight back onto the pitch without the referee's permission. This got him a yellow card, which was his second of the game, and so he was dismissed. Braintree were down to 10 men for the entirety of the second half. With a one-man advantage, Averley really started to pile the pressure on. Charlie Hughes' shot 
being knocked wide by the goalkeeper. That pressure paid off. In the 72nd minute, Tom Stevens' low drill shot was spilled by the keeper for Matt Rush to tap in to level the score. Now looking for a late winner, Avely continued to press, with Aleru dancing past two players, however his shot was over the bar and over the fence. And the same fate followed for Matt Rush's strike. And not too long later, a fantastic ball was put into the box by Benton, placed into the six yard box, but somehow Matt Rush's shot went over the bar. There was one last chance for Averley as a corner was swung into the box. However, Gibbs' header was well over the bar. And that was full time in the Essex Derby. The points were shared, 1-1. Well, that's full time here at Parkside. An eventful afternoon ending 1-1, the points being shared in this Essex Derby. So let's take a quick look back through the game. Braintree, of course, really starting it well on top, having about five or six corners in the first 10 minutes or so. And then the opener being scored on the fifth minute mark as well. Quite a nice strike from, I think, the edge of the box from Matt Carson. Took a bit of a deflection on the way through, but it ended up in the back of the net. And of course, that is all that matters. Avery then started to get back into the game and started to attack themselves, but not much else really happened in the first half. Moving into the second 45, I think about 30 seconds in, Braintree down, uh, Town went down to 10 men after one of their players ran onto the pitch without the referee's permission. He got a yellow card, which was his second of the game, and so he was dismissed. This really did help Averley as they put a lot of pressure on, and I thought their number 10 especially, Benton, really did shine. Uh, the former Southend United man, uh, he, you know, constantly attacking runs into the box and because of him that event, um, that equaliser eventually did come, I think about the 70th minute mark, it was a shot spilled by the keeper, Matt Rush tapping home into the bottom corner and the score from that point on was 1-1. Then there was about 20 minutes left of the game, plus the two additional minutes or so. And again, it was Averley just constant pressure, pressure, pressure. Uh, Braintree was starting to sit back themselves now and just playing counter-attacking football. And it was really, you know, lining up to be a grandstand finish for Averley. Kept having so many chances to score that late winner, but it just didn't come. It just wasn't that day. And the referee did blow the full-time whistle, the game, as I said, ending 1-1. Now, let's hear from the manager of Averley FC, Danny Scopes. So I'm joined now by Danny, you're the manager here at Averley FC. First of all, let's talk a bit about the game. So of course, it was a pretty poor start, the first 10 minutes, <laughs> five corners conceded, a goal conceded. But in that second half, you know, what did you change at half time? What did you say to the boys to inspire that real constant pressure in that second 45? Yeah, yeah I think you're totally right. It was a really slow start, wasn't it, for us? And I didn't think first half we were very good. And I thought we probably after about the first five, ten minutes, we got on the front foot a little bit and had a few opportunities, but I didn't think we played very well. So it was a bit of reflection at half time. What could we do better? Uh, we felt we needed to look after the ball a bit better and be braver at the back and try and keep it. And uh, fortunately enough, obviously they had one sent off, which helped a little bit and able us to get the pressure and I yeah. thought we were all over them second half but just couldn't quite find the uh, winning goal once we got the equaliser. And now the past couple of years the club has seen two promotions, you've won the League Cup all under your management. What would you say is your secret to success? <laughs> um, you have to have a good group of players. I think that's important. You have to have a good club, like the uh, you know the infrastructure of the football club has to write, and the and the committee and the chairmen and the CEOs they have to back you, and and the supporters have to be involved as well. Yeah. I think it's a big team effort, and it, and everyone has to play a part. And I think if everyone plays their part, and us as a management team get a good squad together, and the players play their part, and we're organising, you can go on and do good things. And you know, what we've done in the last couple of years has been really impressive, and I don't take any credit for that. I think it's a 
big team effort and, and it's important. And if one person doesn't play their part, maybe that might not have happened. So I think it's something we can be really proud of over the last couple of years. And, you know, I think today, after 10 games, we're sitting ten, uh, third in the National South after 10 games. And I think that's a massive achievement for us as a football club, considering where we've come from. Absolutely. You mentioned that you're, you're third right now. You've had a flying start to the season, uh, considering this is your first year in the National League South. When you found out you were going to get promoted, when you won the playoffs, was your goal to just try and settle into the league or was it to push for promotion again this season? And whatever one of those goals is, how are you planning to achieve that? Yeah, I think, I think we come into the league, I think everyone wrote us off, didn't they, and felt we were going to be the bottom and we can't get too excited. There's a long way to go still and a lot of football to be played and it's still going to be really challenging for us. But we felt we could be competitive and that's all we say to the boys and the group, how, how can we be competitive? Can we be competitive as many games as possible? And that's our challenge and you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. We don't get too disappointed when we lose and not too excited when we win. So, But I always felt we could compete. Uh, I know the level, I've been in the level before and I felt the squad we were putting together would be competitive and then it's just about getting on the right side of things isn't it and like today obviously we couldn't quite get over the line and, but we'll take our point and, and respect that point but yeah I think it's about sticking together and giving it everything you've got and I always feel when you're written off and you're an underdog it's quite a good place to be isn't it when you've got nothing to lose because it can't get any worse than that and just got to try and prove people wrong and so far we've done that but like I said we've got a long way to go. Uh, still in the FA Cup this season, yep. again, really high in the league right now. How are you planning to keep up this good run of form? Yeah, we always say to the players, the more games you play in the season, the more successful you've been because you've had good cut runs then and you've had maybe playoffs and finals and, and stuff like that. So we've just got to keep going. We do one game at a time and, um, and that's all we focus on. I think if you look at the bigger picture and set bigger targets and it becomes a bit difficult. So we try and go one game at a time and today was Braintree, a full focus went on that and our full focus will go on Hornchurch and we probably won't look no further than that uh, until we get that one out of the way. If, if we can get a result and we get in the next round of the cup, brilliant. I'm all worry about that when it comes. But yeah, one game at a time is our focus and I think that's the best way for us to do it this season. Great, thank you. No pleasure, thank you. Well, that's the end of yet another video and I really hope you have enjoyed watching. Of course, a big thank you goes out to Liam who works here at Avely FC for arranging my day here. Uh, and of course, a big thank you to Danny Scopes, the manager of Avely, for agreeing to speak to me. If you did enjoy watching, please make sure to like, subscribe, share and comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.